There was a recent study that came out around radon, specifically in Calgary, and it turns out that radon is a heck of a lot more prevalent than anybody ever realized, especially in this city. Um, and so in this video, I'm going to talk about what radon is and how you can go about detecting it and then what some of the solutions might be. So recently I've started adding radon detectors into my consultancy process. So when we go and consult for a client, one of the first things that I do when I go and see their property is set up a radon meter. And I recently found this radon meter from a company called AirThings, which is a company out of, I think it's Norway. And essentially it's kind of redefining the radon conversation right now. Um, there's been electronic radon meters, but this one's pretty unique. It sits in your house, it's got a three year battery, it, it logs the radon levels over that period of time, it speaks to your smartphone, um, and it also has a little indicator light actually on the device itself. So if there is a problem with the radon, it'll tell you. So you're probably asking yourself what radon is. And do I have to worry about it? Well, it turns out that radon is an odorless, um, invisible gas that's naturally occurring. And just like the name implies, it's actually radioactive. The study in Calgary looked at a whole bunch of different houses across the city. I'll see if I can find the study and link to it below. And it turned out that they found way more radon in people's homes than they had anticipated. And for years I've been wanting to test the radon in our own house, uh, but just never got around to it. And traditionally the, the old radon meters that uh, I was aware of were these little tiny single use uh, elements that you put into your basement for three months and then you sent it away for analysis. Um, why you want to be concerned about radon is because it's odorless and, and it doesn't have a, a visual appearance um, and it's radioactive. It's now actually either the first or second uh, leading cause of lung cancer. Now I live in my basement and I actually kind of like living in the basement just especially in the summer times when it gets hot. Um, but this is the place where radon is most likely to accumulate. What's really interesting about this is governments are starting to wake up to the fact that radon is a real issue. And so if you look at the new building code, all the new houses are going to be constructed with um, the initial guts, if you will, of a radon mitigation system. So they're actually building foundations on top of culverts um, and they're putting stacks into the house so that they can evacuate the um, radon gas under the foundation before it comes in. So radon will, because it's naturally occurring in the soils um, and it's just de decomposing and it will decompose forever because it's, it's like other radioactive materials has a half-life, um, it finds its way through concrete. It can find its way especially through the cracks in concrete. It can actually come through water. Um, and, and any little crevice or cranny that you can imagine. And so um, this new mitigation strategy of actually putting ducting underneath houses, I think is probably a good idea, although it's gonna add a lot of cost to, to our homes, but, um, but it's good. If you do end up testing for radon in your house using a device like this, um, and there, this company AirThings has a whole bunch of different styles of devices. So this is like a, a Bluetooth version, but they also have a kind of a carry around version as well that you can look at. And again, this is not an affiliate link. This is just something that I've stumbled upon that you might find interesting. Um, the, the best thing that you can do is set up a ventilation system. So a heat recovery ventilator, something that's going to actually change the air over in the house on a fairly regular basis. And that seems to be the least expensive way of managing radon. Now, one other thing to consider, you can't just go and get one of these meters and expect instantaneous results. Um, you do really want to have a study of the house over two to three months. And so what we've started doing is putting these into our clients' homes. We'll do the two to three month study and if they want to keep the radon meter, they can. And if they don't, I'll just take it back and I'll provide it to another client um, for another study. And so I've got three or four of these things going simultaneously. Um, whenever I go and visit my client, it up updates to my smartphone and um, it gives me a better idea as to what the air quality looks like inside of their house. So if you've suspected that you might have radon or if you know that there's radon in your area, 
I highly recommend doing your own radon survey. There's lots of information online. Um, and you can check out AirThings if you want. There's other radon meters that you can get. And make sure you don't wait until somebody ends up with lung cancer. Um, it's really important. It's a simple test. If you don't have radon, you don't have to worry about it. Uh, more and more, you're going to start seeing more of these houses that we build and even retrofit have things like heat recovery ventilators. So the problem should naturally start to disappear. Uh, but in between here and there, I highly recommend testing your house for radon. Thanks so much for listening. If you found this interesting, make sure you subscribe below. You can check us out at vergepermaculture.ca or adaptivehabitat.ca where we offer courses and consulting. Have a great day.